Well, hey, folks, welcome again. Good evening to the Morse Summer 2022 Adventures Day 33. Uh, a busy day and a, I don't want to say profitable day, but, uh, well, somebody made some profit, <laughs> but we accomplished some items today. All right. Um, you know, we had, uh, had breakfast this morning with my friend Bobby. And it, I just uh, enjoy being able to spend some time with him. Uh, his wife had to work, uh, unfortunately, but so it was the three of us. And then, and then uh, uh, took the jeep to get some repairs done to it. And uh, then Bobby calls me and says, "Hey," he says, uh, "You got to do this. And you got to do that. Well, why don't you take our car? That way, you won't be stranded." So, long story short. When, you know, he'd come back here and pick me up, took me to his house, let me use his car. The Jeep's in the garage. We wait, we wait, we wait, take a nap. We wait, we wake up, we wait. Finally, I text him. I called him. Went to a recording, so I left a message. He called me back. Ten minutes later, it's done. I had a broken lug bolt on the left front wheel. Walmart wouldn't touch the vehicle to change the tires because I had to get all four done because they didn't have the size of tire that I needed. So I had, so they couldn't put a mismatched tire. In other words, my two in the front could not be different than the two in the back. Long story short, finally at noon, get my Jeep back. So now we take the Jeep and Bobby's car down to the Delta leave it at Walmart we go to take the car to Grand Junction did some uh, some business over there at the VA took what moment two hours hour and a half something like that stopped by a RV store got some some questions answered or answers to some questions and some advice and some you know information uh, came on back about halfway back to the Delta we'll get a message that the the car the, the Jeep's done so stopped out there so now the Jeep's got four new tires it's got new lug bolts so instead of just replacing the one I had all five of them replaced on that side if one of them's cracked and broke chances are some other ones are going to be got back had a good dinner, uh, and then uh, met over at the campfire, and just, you know, so things, excuse me, things that, that we've been waiting for now for three days, four days, finally got done, uh, so tomorrow, hopefully I can get up on the mesa and do some hiking, um, and, and, Maybe tomorrow we just might explore a little bit. Uh, I know Bobby's uh, going to take me up there. We got, He's got a, a trailer up there he's got to pick up because there's a function going on. Not like RV type trailer. Well, he's got that too, but a flatbed, a little garden type trailer that he's got to go pick up. So I'm going to go up there with him, show where, where the camp is. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. So that may be uh, tomorrow afternoon or even Thursday. Oh, tomorrow is Thursday, or maybe Friday. <clears throat> I can go do some hiking, and Chrissy can stay up there at the cabin, or at the, at the RV trailer, his little camp that he has up there. Maybe drive the Razor, I don't know. Just, uh, But we're just going to enjoy, you know what I mean? Yeah, we had things to do today, and we didn't do a whole lot today, but that's the whole purpose of this break in our trip, was just to unwind, relax. Uh, unfortunately, you know, we spent some money today. Uh, you know, four new tires, five new lug bolts, nuts, you know, it, it, it adds up, but it had to be done. Uh, I feel safer now, and the truck, the, the Jeep does ride, <laughs> rides considerably safe, uh, uh, smoother, I won't say safer, but smoother. Having all said that, you know, we're safe, we're alive, 
we got God to thankful, be thankful for and for all of that. And we got each other, you know. And we're just uh, not driving. I'm not exhausted and tired at, in the afternoon or in the evening. We're getting where we're going because we've, we've been here, you know. Um, and actually, we've only got... <laughs> We've only got about five more days left, and then we'll be moving on. I mean, uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah, Monday, five days, and we'll be moving on. So, you know, speaking of moving on, let's move on to the Scripture. It's a good one. Of course, they're all good. You know that. But, uh, hey, today's Scripture is Romans ten nine. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead you will be saved like you know I like the new King James version another version because you acknowledged and confessed with your lips that Jesus is Lord and in your heart believe adhere to trust in and rely on the truth that God raised him from the dead you will be saved Another version, if you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. Another version, because you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that Christ that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. You know? Because if you acknowledge and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, recognizing his power, authority, and majesty as God, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. This is a this is a new version that I added to my list today. And it's 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 rather long, okay, but I'm gonna go ahead and read it. Um but we'll, we'll see. Uh, and this is the message. Okay, the same verse, t Romans 10, 9, but from the message. Actually, this is, uh, uh, yeah. The earlier, the earlier revelation was intended simply to get us ready for the Messiah, who then puts everything right for those who trust him to do it. Moses wrote that anyone who insists on using the law code to live right before God soon discovers it's not so easy. Every detail of life regulated by fine print. But trusting God to shape the right living in us is a different story. No precarious climb up to heaven or to recruit the Messiah. No dangerous descent into hell to rescue the Messiah. So what exactly was Moses saying? The word that saves us is right here. As near as the tongue in your mouth, as close as the heart in your chest, it's the word of faith that welcomes God to go, do, to, go to work and set things right for us. This is the core of our preaching. Say the welcoming word to God. Jesus is my master. Embracing body and soul, God's work in doing what he did in raising Jesus from the dead. That's it. You're not doing anything. You're simply calling out to God, trusting him to do it for you. That's salvation. With your whole being, you embrace God setting things right, and then you say, Right aloud, God has set everything right between him and me. That's a mouthful to say what, <laughs> what the New King James Version says. But, you know, it's right. Now, in the message, it refers back to Moses and the law. And even says that every little detail of your life was regulated by the fine print. Knowing that we could not do that. Okay? And we're not just talking about the Ten Commandments or the Levitican Law. We're talking about all those laws that man, the Jewish priests and Sadducees and Sadducees, put into effect, added to, to where that it was impossible. And that's what 
the message we're saying. Every every little tidbit of your life was regulated by fine print, knowing that we would, we would fail. So that's why he sent he, being God himself, sent his son, God in the flesh, Jesus Christ. That if you confess in your mouth that Jesus, that the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. You believe in your heart, you adhere, you trust, and rely on the truth. God gave us, if you will, a way out. Knowing that we were going to fail because we are human, we're carnal. We could not do everything exactly right. Only one did, and that was Jesus Christ, His Son, God in flesh. So by proclaiming that Jesus is Lord, that He is risen from the dead, you know, Christ told the disciples and all of His followers and believers to go to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the world, and to tell them, preach what you have seen. Tell them what you have seen. That I came as man, I lived as man, I died on the cross, I shed my blood, my blood, the sacrificial lamb for mankind, was shed on the cross. Christ's blood and I died and on the third day God himself resurrected his son from the grave tell him I am alive and well and I have ascended to my father in heaven for that's where he is now you tell that story a story of fact not fiction you tell him what God has done for you because I can tell them what God has done for me. And I may not have all the biblical answers. The theological answers. But I do know who my Lord and Savior is. And that's all you got to tell them. I was here. God brought me from there to here. And I know who Jesus Christ is. I have a personal relationship with him. And that's what salvation is all about. That Christ came. Died on the cross arose the third day and ascended to heaven just as he said he would and he sent the Holy Spirit to be your comforter and your guide in his absence until he returns and he will return he will return you know and that's what the scripture is about because believe in your heart if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God God has risen him from the dead. You will be saved. End of discussion. It's not for debate. It's a fact. Okay? And if you do not have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, God's own Son, then I encourage you to say, Heavenly Father, forgive me for my sins. Cleanse me with Christ's blood that was shed on the cross for me over 2,000 years ago. Wipe my sins clean. Cover them with Christ's blood. And help me. Forgive me. Guide me. Send me the Holy Spirit to be my guide and my comforter. To explain the things that I'm reading as I'm reading your word. And to guide me in my prayers. In your name, O oh Lord, I ask for forgiveness. Amen. You do that. And repentance means to turn away from what you were doing. So all those things that you were doing... Leave those and follow Christ. Become a Christ. Become Christ-like, which is what Christian means, Christ-like. Become a follower and a believer in Jesus Christ. Folks, tomorrow we're going to be doing a whole lot of the, the same thing today, I think, uh, except spending money. <laughs> Hopefully we ain't going to be doing that <laughs> not like we did today. But, you know... God willing, we'll come to you tomorrow night with another video. Maybe some pictures. I haven't taken any pictures in the last three days, four days that we've been here. Uh, so that's why there hasn't been anything passed. But uh, God willing, we'll have some pictures tomorrow and definitely another video. Good night. God bless.